I heard a rumour yesterday that hasn't been confirmed officially. So I'm going to talk about it as a hypothetical situation, but just be aware that it's potentially a thing now. I heard yesterday that a research study into graded exercise therapy as a treatment for long COVID has been funded. The same was done for ME CFS um, over a decade ago. And it has taken over a decade for health authorities such as uh, the National Institute of Care and Excellence and for other medical professionals to understand that exercise or increased activity is bad for people with ME-CFS. Now for some, long COVID is not ME-CFS. However, there are a large chunk of long COVID patients who do have ME-CFS, or at the very least, they have post-exertional malaise. It's post-exertional malaise that means exercise or increased activity is bad for us. Anyone that's done stripy light bulb CIC's training will know that something called the PACE trial led to graded exercise therapy and cognitive behavioural therapy to be recommended for MECFS, as I say, for over a decade. Graded exercise therapy has harmed patients with MECFS. They go from having MECFS like I have, mild ME, to being house or bed bound. Because graded exercise therapy is increasing your activity levels um, and you're basically encouraged to not listen to your body and to push through to exercise regardless of how your body's feeling. That simply does not work with post-exertional malaise. So if this study has been funded, I would like to know how it's passed an ethics committee because it's now well known that long COVID patients are experiencing significant flares after increased exertion. And that's not just physical exertion. That's not just going for a walk. That's moving around your house a little bit too much. That's doing the washing up or concentrating on emails. It's cognitive as well as physical exertion. So if we know that anecdotally, why are millions of pounds being spent on research into increased activity? To me, that is a complete waste of research funding. I remember when lo the long COVID community got their big pot, big, I call it big, big pot of money from government. I think it was either 12 or 20 million. I can't remember the exact figure. And I remember thinking, oh God, Emmy's never had that. But at the same time, I remember thinking, if they fund something like graded exercise therapy trials or psychological trials, like they do with MECFS, or as they have done historically with MECFS, that money is not going to last very long. Now, you have to bear in mind the graded exercise therapy trial for MECFS cost over £5 million. So that's five, the equivalent trial will cost the same, surely. So that's £5 million out of that chunk of money gone on something that should already be known to be harmful to people with post-viral illness. Um, personally, I'm going to be encouraging long COVID patients to not participate in the research study because we already know, historically, you only have to learn from what's happened with MECFS that patients that took part in the PACE trial over a decade ago were significantly harmed and they are now permanently disabled. As a long COVID patient myself, I would not touch this research study with a barge pole. Um, like I say, it's all hypothetical at the moment because it is only rumour and obviously I will confirm when the official announcement is made. But this is just, to me, this is disgusting. These scientists and researchers are not listening to patients. How many times do you have to be told, I did too much and I've, I've deteriorated? Because as a long COVID patient, I've been paying attention to what long COVID patients are saying. There seem to be a group that don't react to exertion and they are now going out for walks, but I actually think that they were going to be recovering anyway. They had like the post-viral version that does cure itself over a period of time. 
Then there's the chunk that, that's got post-exertional malaise and then there is a separate group. I'm in that separate group because I already had ME-CFS. Um, I think with this research trial, they have to be incredibly careful that they exclude anybody that has the symptom post-exertional malaise. But if they don't know how to test for that, how are they going to do that? Because if they have ME-CFS long COVID patients in that group, there is the chance that they will deteriorate, but it also means that the, any positive outcomes will also be applied to people that deteriorated. So it is, to be perfectly frank, it's a big fat mess and they need to know how to exclude patients with post-exertional malaise. There is a way to test for post-exertional malaise and I suggest they get educated before they do this research study. It should The person that's rumoured to have got the funding for this trial is the same person that said positive thinking and exercise helped him get better from long COVID. As I've just said, he was most likely in the patient group that had post-viral fatigue syndrome and would have naturally got better anyway. Um, and it's not just me that thinks that. There's an awful lot of medics that are now commenting in the British Medical Journal to say the same thing. Um, you cannot overcome a something like ME-CFS or long COVID um, with post-exertional malaise using positive thinking or exercise. Um, but yeah, it's incredibly worrying. The PACE trial from over a decade ago has been caused, sorry, called the biggest medical scandal of the 21st century because it was poor research, it wasn't done properly and it was also partly funded by the UK government, Department of Work and, Department of Work and Pensions and it was purely to get people back to work. So I'd be very interested to see who has funded this rumoured research trial. Because if it's got any interference from UK government, that is equally as scandalous. Anyway, um, yeah, so I would encourage any researchers thinking of doing an exercise research study on long COVID, learn what post-exertional malaise is and exclude those patients from your study. Learn from ME-CFS. Thank you.